Hey, what's up, y'all? Hey, I get a lot of questions asked to me in my email. And IDGT and closes. I don't get tired. Uh, particularly about eights and their performance. There's a lot of misconceptions out. A lot of false information. Sometimes it's coming from the manufacturer trying to profit off of you. Uh, other times it's from individuals who are just play because they love a particular brand. Uh, which is nothing wrong with it. Hell, I, I prefer for valid reasons Sundown when it comes to 80 and subwoofers because of the innovations they have there. But I'm not going to say that they're the best subwoofer for every application. Uh, it all depends on what you have. The vehicle, number one, the power you have to supply, the electrical you have to support that power that you claim that you want to give. Uh, There's a space we have available. Uh, so there is no perfect eight inch. No matter when you see me, you know, in the in the throes of the moment, enjoying my sundown X8. I'm not gonna say it's the best symbol for all applications. I will say it's for most, it will suffice. It'd be more than adequate. But those factors, uh, space available. space available for the enclosure, power you're going to supply, the vehicle, as well as the price, what you're willing to spend. Uh, and in cardio, what you are willing to spend, for the most part, you get what you pay for. Uh, there are exceptions to the rule. They all accept. There's exceptions to everything. There's nothing ever black and white etched in stone. They are always going to be exceptions to the rule. So, one of the, one of the misconceptions I'm going to touch on in this video right here is don't for a moment let anyone tell you with a traditional 8-inch subwoofer, basket, and motor. And regardless of what the motor is, with a traditional 8-inch basket, which is 8.75 in diameter, outer diameter, the, uh, which is used by everybody, Sundown, CT Sound, Scar, Mezio, American Bass, outer diameter is 8.75, traditional 8-inch, what's considered traditional 8. Uh, you're going to have a 6.5-inch spider, no. 675, maybe a seven, seven inch spider underneath, depending on what basket you get. Six, six and three quarters or a seven inch spider on that landing. Whether you have one or two spiders, or even three, you're only gonna get so much usable throw. And that's gonna be somewhere between 23 to 11 millimeters. And on the low end of the spectrum, that throw is based on the, the strength of the motor uh, and the design, whether it's overhung or underhung. At the top end of the spectrum, 23, maybe 24 millimeters. Linear. The Rex is going to be mechanical, which may or may not register on the meter if that's what you're after but for sure it's not going the x, x mechanical is not going to sound as pure as the x max linear that's your cleanest sound that's your cleanest output and most manufacturers tell you the rms that you need to reach linear x max anything any power you throw after that it's just wasted that's a fact. Any power you throw after that, it's just going to be turned to heat for the most part. When manufacturers underrate their subs, they're not underrating it by twice the rate of power. So if their woofer can take a thousand watts daily, they're not going to list it at 500. They might list it at 800. RMS, knowing that they can go to a thousand, but they're not going to list it at half that. 
long nigga. So what I'm saying, a 500 watt subwoofer is not gonna take 100 watts RMS consistently day in day, right day in day out. When they give you the RMS rating, they're saying that that subwoofer can take that RMS rating for eight hours at a time, six to eight hours continuously, and will not destroy or damage any of the soft parts, motor or basket. I'm gonna give you two examples. Sundown X8V3. RMS rating is 800. You will reach your linear max X max at 800. Anything more that you apply, you're going into X mechanical, which can uh, introduce distortion into your output. Hard to hear with a subwoofer, but it's there. It can take 800s RMS, and I know. I know personally, it can take about 1,000, 1,100. It's about three, that's, it's underrated by 300, linearly. It's still gonna sound good. Even though it's reached its linear X max, it's not so far into the mechanical that it's, not, that it's not gonna sound good. Any more power that you put to that eight inch above 1,100, it's just gonna turn the heat, and now you're gonna start destroying the sub itself. Point two, example two, massive hippo, 84. Whether you got the XL or you got the 84, the original. And there's a lot of subwoofers that use that design and motor in the massive hippo 8, 84, and the massive hippo XL, 84. Five hundred watts rating for the massive hippo 84. And I love that. I they, that that is that is a great eight. I wish I still had my Facebook account where I had videos of all these eights I was testing. I'm just now having a free time to get back into it. That Mazda Hippo eight, great sub, 500 watts RMS, 1,000 watts max. Not 1,000 watts RMS, 1,000 watts max, which means it can take that for. I don't know, dynamic burst, something of that nature. Uh, maybe a little bit more. Maybe, you know, you know in, in music, you have, I uh, forgot what they call it, peaks in music. So sometimes the subwoofer, if you got it rated at 500 watts, sometimes it might get a signal based on where you have it turned in, where your dial's at, and what your amp can produce. It might get a dynamic boost of, for, I'm talking about milliseconds, 1,300 watts, 1,400 watts. It'll take that for that split second, but it won't take it continuously. That Battle of Hippo 584, it's 500 watts RMS. I know it could take about 700. Maybe 750. All day, every day. For sure it's going to take 500. Like the Sundown X8 V3. For sure it'll take 800. For hours at a time. No problem. When you start putting more power to a sub, you start increasing the chance of the sub filling. The glue on the former, the glue that's on the magnets, the stack magnets itself. That heat, heat is the enemy. Heat is the enemy in amplifiers. Heat is the enemy in uh, subwoofers. Speakers. Heat and electricity do not go together. Something's going to fail. So I pretty much operate my system and it's just my hair. At, at one time, I remember the whole X8, the old X8 Sundown X8 V1s. Man, I was, I had this videos and people know they know me, know my name. Remember when I used to have a Prime 1200 at one on on each X8 V1. It's rated 750. And those that know the Rockford Fallgate puts out, and it was a Prime series amp, but it puts out way more than 1200 hell they the, the prime series 750 puts out 1100 uh but the i had a prime 1200 on one on each eight and yes i had the SS power set up i didn't have a high power alternator at the time but i did have uh i had three batteries in that truck i got four on this one i had two one on each x8 and i wasn't just throwing a lot of power 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 yeah i got 2400 watts on two eights I know now that no, I didn't. Not only was not counting box rides, but also it's not designed to handle that much power. 
all I was doing was just generating heat. I never tore them up. I was it never tore them up. <sighs> but knowing what I know now, I think my two X8 V3s on this BDCP is 1600 watts with the stepped up alternator and batteries, the full excess power batteries that I have, with three excess power batteries that I have. And that Group 35 factory <laughs> AGM up front because I have a diesel application. I think this is louder than the 2400 watts that I had, <laughs> that I thought I had on the v ones So I'm just putting all this perspective. There's nothing wrong with sending a subwoofer just as rated RMS. Get you a properly designed enclosure. And make sure you're getting true power by having a good electrical to support your amplifier. And you'll be amazed at what any subwoofer, but particularly these 8 inches, can do. Mr. 8 inch out, man. I'm going to holler at you.